Hello, brother. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again, man. It's been yeah, you too. It's gone quickly. I think we were on the air together yeah. like two months ago, and it's like it seems like yesterday. I can't believe it. <laughs> so I know. Super and fast. We, we talk about the Chris Hive mind because yeah. we're quite often on the same page, and like both of our staff who watch both of us fully, like the entire you know, <laughs> nine yards say that we're always on the same page about the signs and whatnot. And I thought this would be a great new year special to tag team with you and look at the signs for the new year. Yeah, absolutely. I'm always getting texts from my, my assistant saying, Oh, you and Chris said exactly the same thing. So <laughs> we'll I'm see what happens today. Yeah. We're, we have that same, it is a Chris hive mind. Maybe it's the Christ conscious. That's another conversation mm. down the road. Before we dive in, man, um, let's just do like a little wrap up of the year. You know, I think 2023 went really fast for me. I don't know about you. Oh yeah. It was, I, I, yeah. No, I can't believe it. I can't believe that we're already in December. I mean, it went so fast. It's like time is speeding up and I don't know if it's Saturday yeah. in Pisces because it's been more about spiritual. So we've been a little out of it. What have been a couple of the main themes that you've seen the world going through this year through all of your tarot cards? I mean, I'd say the big overarching theme is, you know, leaving a comfort zone, which I talk a lot about this year, which I do think is changing next year. Um, so maybe for the past few years, uh, that would be a big theme. Um, you know, and I always think of like this year as the year 2023, like if I really think about it, is the year where the universe is like, okay, like what world do you want to live in? I think maybe this is like a decision year in that sense. And what do you mean by world exactly? I mean, is that human based or? Um, I think it's uh, whatever you want it to be. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's uh, what, like, you know, what are your main focuses? What thing, you know, what things do you want to accept in your life? What things do you not want to accept in your life? And, you know, can you move more in the direction of uh, having more of what you want and more of the experiences, situations, energies, you know, everything? Interesting. You know, from the astrology standpoint, this year, Saturn entered into Pisces in March. And, you know, from the astrology point, that means that it's the end of a spiritual era, which would mm. of course mean that it's the end of a physical world era. That's what I was asking you about yeah. physical world. So we definitely see, and I saw that too, in the astrology aspect, it was a lot of wrapping up of like issues you've had with yourself since you were born, mm. which then to me, like freed you to see your world in a different way. Like your perception changed simply because you weren't beating yourself up like you used to be or taking, you know, crap from the world or feeling low on yourself. So it's like those, you know, pardon the pun, those minnow pond puddles dried up. Yeah, that definitely, I, I mean, and I, I guess that's what I mean by two worlds, because I've seen people, some people choose to stay, um, you know, in, in that, uh, in their old lessons. And again, there's no right or wrong here, of course. Um, and I've seen other people totally leave. So it makes perfect sense. What's your bet on that? Like I've asked people, people have asked me, can I be left behind? Do you, do you feel like it'll, that they'll be able to catch up? Or do you feel like people are literally choosing two realities right now? I think people, I think it's like a mixture of both. I think people are literally choosing uh, two realities between two realities right now. And, you know, again, it's like, just because you stay, it's not like your life is going to be horrible or, you know, something like that. And I mean, unless it's someone who's doing something super toxic, but, um, you know, I think maybe it's just like, there's some lessons to learn and you can catch up or you can not just like how I look at astrology, you know, it's, I don't think it's good or bad, but you either work with it or you don't. Yeah. I mean, there's been talk about, there's a lot of people out there in our business who have been talking about, there's going to be a you know world of light of small communities and to be a world of darkness and dystopia. And this would be two separate worlds, but I'm sort of of the same thinking of you in the sense of people may take more time to, to like face their stuff. Some people need to see other people do it first successfully, I think, before they jump in the, into the, you know, minnow pond, <laughs> you, know, so, you know, like, um, so I'm not, I wouldn't say like, if people feel behind or that they weren't able to make the shift, I wouldn't say that, you know, the day is over that you have no more chances ahead. It seems like people have different timelines, but the, the earth itself seems to be moving on to a new era is what we're seeing. Yeah, I think, you know, I say it to Pisces mostly all the time, but I, I think it's true for everyone with Pluto going into Aquarius. I'm like, just, I think the one spiritual thing you can do right now is be an inspiration, which is just do, you know, become the best version of yourself and be an inspiration for other people. And that's like you just said, people, even the people who haven't caught up, I think if they see in someone who is an inspiration, then they will catch up because they'll kind of know what to do. Yeah, brilliantly said. You know, another big thing happening, you mentioned Pluto just now. Pluto is ending up ending its Capricorn run. It does go back into Capricorn from September to November of next year. That's only at 29 degrees, though. So I sort of feel like that's a final test, like God going, are you sure? Like that kind of thing. <laughs> but it, it is a 15-year transit since 2008. So it's a long time of power struggle. 
currently the world is in a huge conundrum with power. We have the Ukraine issue. We had the issue erupt here with Israel and and uh, Palestine, of course. Where do you see world power shifting? Uh, well, first of all, what did you see happening this year in the cards? Did you see it coming up in the cards? Yeah, so constant tower moments this year. I even said since uh, the last year, 2022, at the end of the year, I started getting the tower all the time. And I, I mean, there are plenty of people that have seen it that where I said there are going to be issues, there are going, going to be tower moments that come up. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sure I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but, you know, I think 2024 is going to be all about building. So there's all, this old structure is breaking and um, you can either focus on the breaking or you can build something new. I think that that's part of the two new worlds is you either are a builder or you're a breaker. There, there is no like in between in that sense. So um, I always tell people, it's like, yes, there's going to be a lot of things to worry about, a lot of things breaking, but you should just be building something new. That's like the best place to be. Definitely where our followers are, you know, yeah, absolutely, uh, or, or at least, you know, people watching with popcorn, the buildings come down, <laughs> <laughs> right. that kind of thing. Does the, the terror? So, what does the tower exactly mean? Just for reference to my subscribers yeah. who may not know. Yeah. So personally, I like the tower. I know everybody freaks out when they see it. Some consider it to be the worst card, but really, yeah. the tower is just about ignoring reality, which it seems like a lot of these things, a lot of th the issues that we're facing are from ignoring reality. Um, and so the tower, those people are being brought down to earth because they've built those walls up around them, trying to protect themselves from reality, and so they're just being brought back down to reality. Okay, so it's sort of like being forced into the pond. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like... yeah, exactly, and being forced to the truth as well, really. And and you know they never get reduced all the way down. So there's always, you know, it's really not as bad as it seems because they always get down to the foundation. Yeah, I, I've always, and if there's a house of cards, that would also be a tower too. Like if you're yeah, absolutely really building on illusion, building on top of illusion, that sort of thing. Another big theme this year was Jupiter and Taurus, and. Uh, it only went, I think, so far as I think 10 or 11 degrees, uh, 10 degrees, I believe, building self-worth uh, for people. Have you s seen that in your cards amongst the signs? Yeah, so I talk, I, uh, I always get for uh, Jupiter and Taurus about like freedom and also this weird thing, like I know Taurus is ahead, but I always like, my brain is always like heart, you know, even it, more intuitive. So I'm like, yeah, Taurus is the head, but e everybody's moving towards the heart. It's funny because, um, you know, last year I said, someone asked me something about the lottery. I'm like, well, we're going to have record high lottery numbers because Jupiter's in Taurus because, um, you know, to me, Jupiter in Taurus is like, get rich slow, don't get rich quick. And uh, <laughs> I wasn't wrong. There have been like two Powerballs over a billion dollars since that happened. So. So um, I keep telling people, I'm like, work on permanent things, work on things that, you know, bring more freedom into your life, whatever that means for you. Um, you know, that's what I focus on there. Yeah. And the astrology is focused on that all happening as a consequence of the two, what we talked about, Jupiter is basically sextiling Saturn and Pisces. So it's like these karmic puddles drying up with myself where I've been beating up on myself since my rotten childhood, mm. you know, I, I incarnated into a family that sort of, I think, continued a pattern I always had. And as I sort of faced the issues of being hard on myself and continuing my family's karma or anyone else's karma, then suddenly as they drop, my self-worth starts to go higher as my self-worth starts to go higher. Now, suddenly I'm drawing in more opportunities. So it's, it's this interesting sort of tug and pull on almost like a, an entanglement of karma is what I've noticed astrologically. Yeah, super. And I always look at Neptune and Pisces as like a direct challenge to traditional belief. So, you know, any belief that we were like raised with or whatever, you know, is going to be challenged with during Neptune and Pisces, as far as I'm concerned, too. Yeah, Neptune and Pisces is also a morality code as well yeah. in astrology. And it's like in its high degrees, it's like high morality. The last time Neptune was in this degree of Pisces is right before the American Civil War. And oh, yeah. I feel like it's when a, a fraction of America said, this is immoral, this much stop. And you sort of see that morality card being dropped, which is interesting because I have seen that, you know, in social media and stuff, like from perspectives of whether or not we should be in a war with U Ukraine, whether or not oh, we should be funding Ukraine, whether or not, especially towards the end of the year, actually with Israel and Palestine, that was literally a, hmm. a potential holy war. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a great point too. Neptune, Pisces, holy war. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's interesting. And I kind of feel like, you know, the last time it was, or it was a holy war in the sense of it's immoral to enslave people. I know there's also an economic portion to that too. If you look at history, it was also about, I think banking and other types of stuff, but certainly seeing that uh, this, this whole year, like finally building to a head, a lot of things that I think had gone silent uh, prior to that. 
Another thing that happened astrologically this year is we had the North Node move into Aries for the first time since 2004 and the South Node in Libra. And the South Node in Libra would indicate that there would be relationship changes. It's been in the high degrees of Libra, which is mostly about collaboration. And I was expecting a lot of relationships to fall apart. But I had noticed once it happened, I realized, oh, they already have fallen apart. Like I didn't really see anything <laughs> really falling apart, but I did see all the sort of collaborations coming together, including with yours truly here and you, you know, like um, <laughs> what have you seen in relationships through this year in the cards? Yeah. So like two things, the thing that stands out to me is uh, two of cups, for example, comes up in all the readings. And so I'm like, oh, uh, you know, this has been happening since like 2020. And I was, I used to always talk about how I think that that happened change happened. It's something that I noticed, which when I notice something, it's pretty weird because, you know, I do so many readings. So I notice these trends when they happen. And uh, so Two of Cups started coming up all the time. And I was like, oh, and, you know, Two of Cups is you and someone who's very different than your usual type. So it's almost like we're attracting a totally different type. And like you just said, um, the other thing that I constantly have been noticing is that uh, it's almost as if people are realizing that people have been telling you you know exactly who they are right up front <laughs> so it's like really in those moments where you think like oh i wonder if this person's interested in me or if this is going to last longer it's like well actually no you've probably recently learned no they tell they told you right away what was going to happen that's interesting i also think you know to couple that as well because i agree venus is currently in scorpio as we tape this so it's sort of like a, a kind of a transparency um but in the same sense too it's like with Saturn and Pisces, once you stop blaming yourself for stuff and you get over that karma of holding yourself back, then it's almost like you stop projecting on the other people and you saw the truth too. Yeah, that too. Yeah. It's like undeniable. It's like, okay, I used to think I was a problem. You're clearly the problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're sort of, exactly. We're seeing that. Then the North Node in Aries as well. It's like in the high degrees of Aries, it's sort of like recharacterizing ourselves. Like again, We'll talk about Aries today in our predictions, but you know, Aries is on the comeback from what I can tell with the North Node in Aries. And so there's a new characterization of ourselves, I think, birthing, especially towards the end of the year, like a new version of ourselves, um, a new expression of ourselves, or even in some cases, like I'm going to become a plumber or I'm going to become a dancer or, you know, kind of going for not ego for ego's sake, because Saturn and Pisces is like, it has to be something you love. It has to be something that's worthwhile. You could even say that COVID was part of this as well. Once COVID happened here in the United States anyways, and we, you know, we, we came off that 60 hour a week job and we realized like, oh, I have no life. I gave it to career. <laughs> it's like, this is the year where I think people have finally started to go, okay, well now what, who am I and what am I doing next? Yeah, I think that goes back to like the whole heart based thing that I keep getting in re my readings, you know, people needing to go towards your heart. And it, it, there is something like weird and logical, like, you know, I think that we, we ha there's some sort of challenge where we our logical brain is like, oh, no, you can't go reinvent yourself, do this thing, you know, uh, something new or, you know, or you're not worth it, worth it or worthy or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and I think that's part of the new age birthing, too, as well. Yeah. Did you see with Pluto in the high degrees of Capricorn, we certainly saw a power struggle here in the United States in this in these last moments of Capricorn. We have, you know, Biden perhaps may not be on the ticket, at least that's the rumor, anyways. Trump may be in jail and and make it as president. And then we have Bobby Kennedy, who's created a third party that looks <laughs> significant since for the first time since Ross Perot, which ironically was kind of similar to the Saturn transit when Ross Perot was challenging Saturn, I think was going from Aquarius, uh, was going from Aquarius to Pisces. So it was very similar in the Saturn transit. Um, where have you seen, you said the tower, but have you seen power struggle as a theme in the cards? Yeah, I mean, like, um, you know, I always look at Two of Swords, which come, is another common theme, because Two of Swords is this or that thinking. Literally, for 2024, I think one of the, one th if you want to be super successful, third place solutions. You know, everybody thinks this or that, but there's always a third place that no one's thought of before. And um, so, you know, that's the power struggle that I really see. And, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I think that having another party fits in perfectly with the astrology in general. So, you know, uh, Pluto and Aquarius, right? Totally. I think and you're right. And I think that's very good, acute uh, insight that you're giving because in Pisces, which you are, by the way, <laughs> yeah. watching, Pisces is literally two fish swimming in different directions. And it's like in the age of Pisces, which we're sort of wrapping up, uh, you pretty much were given two choices. And part of the control was you have two choices, like, you know, uh, the, the top fish or the bottom fish, the right, mm. the left, the, the good, the evil, Republicans, Democrat. And I do think Aquarius is that third option, or as you could say, you know, none of the above. 
uh, yeah. energetically. So I, I think that's a, a brilliant insight there. So let's talk about Pluto moving into Aquarius then. So Pluto was in Aquarius on January 20th. It already made a dent to use your, your language uh, for a moment this year, which I think was just sort of, you know, it was at the beginning of the year from, I think from like January to like March to April or so it said, in that time, I think it gave the universe like, hey, you have other options. So I think it introduced that there might be a third option, but now it's going to really take hold and go to two degrees in 2024. It's sort of the birth of the new era, the birth of the age of Aquarius. Uh, where are you seeing the, those births in the cards? Yeah, like I think the uh, most of the bursts are coming out in like the fear of criticism. You know, I always tell people like maybe one of the biggest risks you could, you could take right away with Pluto on Aquarius is, you know, saying something being wrong, saying something you know, your mom judges you or, you know, whatever the case may be and needing to kind of put those things out into the world anyway. It's like, you know, a very unique time. I, I get the chariot a lot, I think of as well, which is he's making himself unique. He's setting himself apart. He's leaving that city behind him behind. He's literally leaving a place where everything is the same and going to a place where, uh, you know, he has, he's like trying to find his own place where maybe he can be the leader. And, you know, I know Pluto and Aquarius, you know, Aquarius, we think of the collective, but, um, you know, I think it's important with Pluto and Aquarius that people like benefit the collective, but don't become part of the hive mind, the Chris hive mind, right? Stay, stay out of the Chris hive mind. Actually, <laughs> It's not fun in here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's a mess. It may look pretty, but it's not funny. <laughs> uh, I think that's true. I mean, Aquarius is interesting because it is, you know, the last time Pluto was in Aquarius was the American revolution. Um, yeah. the, the war had really started. We declared our separation of powers with Pluto and Capricorn, the constitutions at Pluto at 27 degrees Capricorn. So we declared our independence, but we didn't really fight for our independence until Pluto went into Aquarius. So this idea of independence and and being an individual and having individual rights, these are all themes of Pluto and Aquarius. And I agree. I'm seeing in all 12 signs where uh, it, they're, they're allowing – people are allowing themselves to be the weird one out. It's no longer a bad thing. I think you're seeing it too like – in social media and TikTok and whatnot. And that's one of the things that, you know, we haven't talked about the gender fluidity and how, you know, now, you know, we have the power to decide what our pronouns are and that sort of thing. That's sort of part of the same wave, I think, of Pluto and Aquarius, which is like, I'm going to define myself the way I want to define myself. And you all either get on board or take a hike, seems to be what the energy is. And you say that's the chariot, huh? Yeah, I think that's the chariot. Um, you know, when, when you think about it as well, the chariot driver, you know, I'm stealing this from the Leo King, but he kind of looks like the magician, you know, the guy that's in the chariot itself. And, um, you know, <laughs> he, he is the sign of the magician is reinvention, reinventing yourself, what, what, whatever you want to be. Yeah. So I, I think that in some ways, I don't know, I can't speak for the world, but in myself, it's like I'm giving myself permission to be who I always was. But I'm just no longer fighting myself about it is where I'm finding that that energy in myself. Well, I mean, Taurus, I'm always calling you out for the for, um, you know, imposter syndrome, even your little you'll see when we get to our New Year's resolutions here. But, uh, you know, I think that's what it's all about for Taurus. So, you know, it's just being who you already are. Yeah, that's true. I think we, we're very sensitive and we don't want to disappoint people, I think, is part yeah. of it. Um, another theme going on. So let's talk about 2024. We have Pluto and Aquarius, which you talked about. So it's like the birth of independence, a shift of power, a third option, a third party, you know, um, just that other person. I mean, really a third perspective really shifts everything because we've been mm -hmm. caught in that duality. Uh, Saturn is going to be in Pisces and go through the the, the early degrees and, and make it up to the mid teens. So it looks like we're going to, we're going to wrap up our karma with ourselves once and for all, and really be empowered by it. Neptune will hit 29 degrees Pisces, which is the same degree the Civil War started in April. Are you seeing any world conflicts, um, you know, coming up in the cards or, or hints of that? Yeah, I mean, other than the tower, like to me, it's such a wild card right now because I also like I had this um – you know, I, I mean, I'll just tell you, I had this like this, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know, I would, I would call it a vision or something like this, but, you know, I had this idea of kind of like the Trojan horse popping into my head just in general. Um, mm -hmm. and so I've had this like this recurring, recurring kind of like vision of this, uh, Trojan horse thing. And, um, but almost like a positive Trojan horse where maybe it looks like things are going to happen, but nothing actually happens or it's not as bad as, um, you know, people that make it out to be. And, um, you know, kind of like along those same lines, I started like meditating on it. And I started like seeing in the future people like looking back over the last 10 years, we're talking 10 years from now, like right now. And I saw like a lot of people 
being like, oh my God, I worried about all these things and I didn't get anything done. So <laughs> I'm like, listen, people, Neptune and Pisces, your crazy ass dream, your crazy idea, Saturn and Pisces are burying that dream down to earth. Don't worry about all the craziness that's going on. You know, I think that um, I'm not saying anything is going to come to save us because I don't think anything is going to come and save us. But yeah. I think we're going to save ourselves, number one, third place solutions. But um, also, I think that we can save ourselves by, you know, building something great, whatever that is for you. I think that's great. I was con I was sort of comparing this moment to, you know, the pilgrims landing on Plymouth Rock. It's like mm -hmm. the age of Aquarius is technically 100 years from now as far as astrology and the actual math calculations. Of course, that's the bell curve. That's when most of the population is at that consciousness. But it seems like 2024 is sort of landing on Plymouth Rock. Like if those pilgrims didn't risk everything like total fantasy it may be you know we don't even know if the earth is flat around i'm talking about <laughs> back in 1492 so like talk about fantasy you get on this ship for this promised world that you're going to be rich and have all the land you want so we're sort of like looking a little crazy to get on that ship but if those <laughs> pilgrims hadn't gotten on that ship there would have been no 1776 and the declaration of independence it seems the same next year in 2024 for the individuals it's like if you know in your heart there's a promised land out there you want to be the first one to stake that territory. If you have the courage and you have the conviction, then get on that, get on that Mayflower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. And then another thing is Jupiter and Taurus. So, you know, Jupiter, as we talked about in 2023, Jupiter was sort of like cleaning up our self-worth. And when you sextile that to Saturn, it was like drying up karmic puddles with ourself, but Jupiter will now move past step 10 and into all the degrees into Gemini. Um, and with Uranus, it's going to conjoin Uranus. I believe it's step 21, which is a very fertile degree for them to conjoin. Mm. It's sort of unlimited possibilities. So, you know, the astrology is showing like from an economic perspective, whether you look at AI or self-driving cars or, you know, these burgeoning industries, it seems like 2024 is also the year to go for any kind of material gold rush that you want to go after. Like it's super supported. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, all the energy, I think of all the energy, Uranus and Taurus, Jupiter and Taurus and like technology, um, yeah. you know, I think that both really, you know, any, anything, any new technologies, you know, I know people are worried about AI, but like I tell people, it's like far from perfect, number one. And also it's, you know, use it. <laughs> it's like a calculator. It's only as smart as what you put into it. And, um, you know, it, it can be very useful for like coming up with ideas, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, the other thing people need to know about AI since we're on that topic is that like it's learning from us. Right. So if you don't ex if like what it tells you, correct it. Correct it. Yeah. It actually is listening and and, and it is learning from what you say. So the more people that correct it, and they built the algorithms that way to be responsive to the population. And so we sort of have this like overlord 1984 Orwell <laughs> sort of feeling of AI. And it does have that potential, there's no question. But one of the things about AI that I noticed too, you know, Pluto moving to Aquarius is the birth of the age of light. You know, I think that the spiritual light work industry, for instance, is going to grow continuously for the next 24 years, you know, and I have been arguing like that's the one job AI won't take over. I don't think AI is going to pull my tarot cards. Yep. It's not going to pull your tarot cards. Uh, you know, I, I encourage people to have experiences as well. I mean, you know, I think that having, you know, applying your own experience to things, like if you're worried, if you have a job, it's like, learn about it, have experiences with that and then share your experience. It's like your experience. No one, you are the robot in that sense. So, you know, um, you know, that's what I would do. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, looking at the astrology ahead, I don't know if you do, do you, how do you work as far as yearly predictions? Do you pull cards for the whole year for the whole country? Or, you know, have you done that yet? Or is it, are we taping before that? I know we're taping ahead of this date. Yeah, no, I do it. So I've done all 12 signs already. So those are up and uh, I do it by sign. I don't, I don't think I've ever, maybe once I've done for the world, but yeah. <laughs> Be interesting. Maybe we'll get together like in March or yeah. something. And, and like, I would love that. Yeah. And scope out the world. Be the reason is because Looking at the astrology, and, and and by the way, we're here to help individuals. Chris right. and I are, you know, we have the Chris Hive mind in that sense that we both, we both are naturally aligned in the sense that you are the solution. You watching right now, you are the one that's going to change the world. But also, we're swimming in an ocean, not a pond, in that regard. So, what's the temperament of the ocean? It looks like the temperament of the ocean climax is around April. We have a solar eclipse on April seventh and nineteen degrees that conjuncts Chiron. So. In that moment, the world is going to sort of feel healed. I think that's the last, you know, nail in the coffin of the old self, the old self regrets, the old self issues. And then Jupiter will finish in Taurus and then goes into Gemini in late 
May. And it looks like at that point from May till, till election time, there's going to be a lot of rhetoric. There's going to be a, you know, Jupiter and Gemini means a lot of communication. You're going to be super hyped up in that year being a step five Pisces. Are you seeing a lot of noise, I guess, versus signal in the upcoming year? Yeah, I, I mean, I talk about that all the time about the noise, needing to drown out the noise. I mean, I've had people try to cancel me for saying this, which is unbelievable. Um, but, you know, um, you know how, <laughs> we want the noise. I, like, I'm not talking about any situation and I'm not political at all. Personally, um, I could care less, honestly. But, um, you know, I think that there is going to be a lot of noise. The reason I tell people it's not like I tell people to bury their head in the sand. But the reason I say it is because, again, I just see in the future people like realizing they worried about all the, this stuff that's going on, but none of it ma matters in just a few years and then having done nothing so you know i think it's better to actually do something you know about whatever it is that you're that you're worried about but the noise thing comes up all the time that there's gonna be a lot of noise i think you know i always see like the peaks between now 2025 and then maybe like between like 25 and uh 33 it kind of like goes down in my head is how i see it and then maybe things return to normal like at 2033 somewhere around there yeah, and that that sort of echoes the American Revolution and the time period of it as well. Uh, if you look back and compare how long it took for America to get smooth coasting mm. in these new freedoms and to enjoy these new freedoms. I concur with you, by the way. I really feel like what's different about the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius is in the age of Pisces, it's like two sides made a difference. It was two sides fighting mm. each other, the two fish. In Aquarius, you, the individual, are it's a spiritual democracy. So... As much as you can be, you know, distracted by the noise, it really is meant to distract you. It's part of the old power regime, the old power for power's sake. And so if you can focus on yourself, put your head down, you being who you are is what's changing the world. From what I can tell in the astrology, you're not going to change it by going after the old power mechanisms, which is, you know, you know, boy boycotting is powerful. These old what methods of power I think are less powerful looking forward. Yeah, and we're seeing that. I mean, and you know, the thing that pops into my head about Aquarius too, the water bearer, it's like, you know, when you think about it, she she is like pouring water onto the land, you know, and I really always see that as, you know, what's possible for one person is possible for everyone. So I think we're gonna see like even even if you think you're an underdog, like now is the time of the underdog, you know, try to try to be the not underdog. <laughs> Yeah, totally. And and actually take advantage of the chaos. It's like Yeah, absolutely. When yeah. when it's not noise, when it's not chaos, people are trying to stop you. They have more time and attention to focus on it. like race ahead, take advantage of that moment cuz sometimes you you know, when you take advantage of chaos, you end up on top just because you were focused in that moment. Yeah. And it, it's like the, the other part of that, I, I think, is that things are, you know, we've already kind of seen the the beginnings of what's possible for people. You know, I think all the gatekeepers have been removed. Like you can publish your own book now. You can have your own YouTube channel now and you can yeah. destroy television on YouTube. So, um, you know, I think that we've been warmed up for, to this point and it's like now is like stepping onto stage now now is the time to actually say okay did you learn that there are no gatekeepers and you can just do whatever you want or are you going to still go back to the gatekeeper well said man and i think we saw some of that this year with like you know and i'm not choosing sides i'm just citing an example tucker carlson yeah. got, got fired from fox and his numbers are like quadruple five times what he was getting on fox so it's it sort of it seems like that's one of the things that died this year was legacy media and its replacement, it may seem like it's there, but it's really not. Like, this is the time to express yourself in this upcoming year, I think. Yeah, and I think it doesn't fit into the old system. You know, one of my favorite books of all time, Science of Getting Rich, you know, he says we're, you know, it's a very old book. This guy was way ahead of his time, Wallace Waddles. And he says that, um, you know, we're going from a time of competition to co-creation. And when you think about, like, legacy media, the way that it operates, the way it collects money, it's all competition. It's all um, you know, kind of like that old world. And he says that, you know, these people, he calls them the titans of industry. It's like without them, we wouldn't have gotten to this place where we can be co-creative in the first place. So it's not about like hating or anything like that, you know? I agree. It's a natural course of evolution. Like you you had to consolidate power to 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 build up an infrastructure that empowers the individual. So, right. you know, you no way you're going to coordinate all the individuals on earth to come together without the internet. You had to have these titans of power that started probably with yep. Rockefeller and oil and went all the way to Zuckerberg and internet. But now that everyone has these same tools and the gate, the gatekeepers have been removed now. Yeah. The power shifts naturally organically to the individual. Uh, so, it, you know, we're grateful uh, to say goodbye. <laughs> 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 thank you. But don't yeah, let thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah. this is great, man. Let's shift power. Let's shift power, shift focus now. And I thought it'd be great to do New Year's resolutions for all 12 signs. And we can go back and forth to introduce, introduce them. Um, I came up with two resolutions per sign. And so for all 12 signs, you all can uh, kind of write these down. This is Chris and I doing our Chris Hive mind on, on the scope <laughs> of it. I tried to do one resolution, which you're going to like, and one resolution that you're going to have to step up to. And we'll start, of course, we'll just go in the order of the Zodiac. We'll start with the Aries. And I'll just say with Aries, you know, Aries are at a pivotal moment right now with the North Node in their sign, with Chiron halfway through their sign. They're being made over. And I've been saying on my channel, like the Aries in the old era were heroes. And now that everyone is being forced to be their own hero, they're sort of out of a job. Like, I think they're focused, they're trying to find their own identity now in this new age, because they've, they've been kind of part of the age of Aries, they're the fighters, and the age of Pisces, they were heroes. What's an Aries going to be now? You know, like maybe an influencer, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, but so my resolution for Aries is to like, um, to once again, be the best. So, and by the way, I recommend that you kind of toast to this on New Year's or write it down or journal, by the way. I think the first resolution to once again, be the best, like it's time to identify what you can be the best at. And you are motivated by being the best Aries. Let's, let's be honest. But by doing that, you force everyone to get up off their can and do something. So I think it's to identify, to once again, be the best. And the second is to raise their prices. Mm -hmm. um, and I... I, I wish everyone says they love money or whatever, but I think Aries is actually, ironically, they're hard workers, but they don't like to work. Like, so I think to raise your prices, you're thinking, oh God, that means I've got to do this. I got to do that, blah, blah, blah. But I do think this is a time to raise your prices if you're in Aries. What what do you pick up for the Aries? Yeah, so uh, I so I channeled all mine and uh, I channeled uh, Steve Jobs for you for some reason. Stay hungry, stay foolish. That's what, what immediately popped into my head for Aries. Um, I totally agree. Like, you know, all my readings as well for Aries are all about, you know, kind of, doing their own thing and really that's where i get this whole message from them of they've been like training for maybe the past few four or five years or so uh before whatever they're about to step into but yeah that's what i get for aries pretty simple yeah pretty simple and the south nodes and libra so i think Arieses are changing relationships too i'll just say yep absolutely there'll be a relationship swap out or upgrade or for the first time because they can be solo artists yeah uh, excellent. All right. Tauruses. Tauruses uh, have a lot of energy. Like the universe is investing in Taurus. So we have Jupiter in Taurus for the first time since 2011, 2012. We have Uranus in Taurus for the first time since 1938. So Tauruses are being upgraded in a big way. My uh, New Year's resolution for Taurus is to show the world what I am made of, to show the world what I'm made of. And I think that comes from Saturn and Pisces. Um, I think Tauruses have been a little reserved. They don't always show their cards. But I think it's time to sort of reveal their cards and reveal their magic. And the second is um, to walk away from bad investments of time. I think Taurus is overinvest and give their time. They see value in everything, so they tend to overinvest. I think the hard part for Taurus is to say no this year. I think more no's lead to better yeses. So to walk away from bad investments of time. What is your prediction for Taurus or very similar. <laughs> I said, okay, uh, face, good. I said, face fears of the new and not being good enough. So I think it's, you know, two fears, uh, something new and not being good enough to do something that, you know, you are good enough to do in the first place. That's good. And, and, um, I think the new part is all about the comfort factor of Taurus. Like they just, we just get so comfortable. We like new shiny stuff, but we're just so comfortable in the old grungy stuff. <laughs> well, I wonder as well, like, um, you know, I think, you know, you said 2012. I was like, oh, okay, Taurus, you need to th think back to 2012. Um, like, what were you doing at that time? Because I have a feeling just intuitively that Taurus is going to revisit something from 2012. Very similar story. To be honest, like, what I'm about... that story. <laughs> yeah, I actually, and this tells you how slow we are. I'm right. now <laughs> doing things I thought of in 2012. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it took a whole Jupiter 12 years for me to get around. Actually, yeah, I tried. Yeah. I moved as fast as I could. I'm just big, you know, like energetically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. Gemini's, um, you know, Gemini's with Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. Th there's a lot of faith building going on behind the scenes for Gemini, in fairness. Like, um, so they they are trying to find their faith. And, and faith is not an idea, Gemini. You're not going to find it in your mind. So I think it's one of the things I want to say. Um, but my New Year's resolution for Gemini is based on Saturn to climb my own ladder, to climb my own ladder. I think Geminis have tended to always climb someone else's ladder, but with Saturn in the 10th house, I think, and Neptune there, this is a first for them. 
I think they're going to go out on a limb and and do their own thing. So climb on your own, to climb my own ladder and to shift my power from thinking to intuition, to shift my power from thinking to intuition. I think uh, the new age Gemini needs to acknowledge their psychic intuitive side. I think what happens in Gemini is they they intuitively pick up the answer is right. And then their logical mind just acts like it knew it. And it was smart. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I think in reality, they intuited it. So I think yeah. to shift power to the intuition is going to be a key for them this year. What about you? Yeah. So I said, challenge yourself, no more wishing, make things happen. So, you know, I think that it is time for them to take action. And, you know, I go back to COVID times for Gemini all the time thinking mask, no mask, but it's like, don't think of it that <laughs> way. Like, are you wearing a mask or are you presenting yourself as you actually want to be? Yeah, that's great. Reiterate your uh, one more time. I said, uh, <clears throat> challenge yourself, no more wishing, make things happen. Ah, it was a no more wishing that I thought yeah. was very interesting too. I do think you're right on that. I mean, I'm just talking about their character in the sense that their mind, like, Gemini is like the one who will like buy a lotto ticket and just be gone for the day imagining. <laughs> like they're just like wishing and thinking about what they do with it. They just completely lose touch. And then they don't win the lottery and they realize they they missed a week of work. You know, right. like, so the wishing thing I thought was really uh, yeah. poignant there. Yeah. Um, cancers. Cancers are... What's interesting about cancers is with Jupiter and Uranus, it's in their 11th house. So they're, I think they're coming into a new social world, you know, like and seeing themselves in the world in a different way with Pluto in their seventh house. I think they're at the same time getting out of codependent relationships, which has been like their bane of existence since the day they were <laughs> born. So I think we're about to see a new cancer we've never seen before. Uh, so my prediction, my uh, news resolution for cancer is to go where I am appreciated so mm. to leave behind where I'm not appreciated and to go where I'm appreciated and to start over with my relationship approach. Like, so cancers, I love you, but you've got relationships all wrong. Like, I think like they're all old age. They're all master disciple. They're all slave, you know, slave owner. <clears throat> it's very old school in the power structure. I think cancers kind of like that. And they romanticize that in a way being taken care of or taking care of the little wife, that sort of thing. But I think they have to reinvent relationships altogether. What are your thoughts? Yeah, interesting. I, so I had Nine of Cups pop into my head for cancer. And Nine of Cups to me is an energy of like really bathing in the energy of what you want to be. It's not about acting as if. It's more about being the thing that you want to be. And uh, so that's what popped into my head for cancer immediately. Like boldly be the thing that you want to be. It's about, you know, adopting the habits, the, the um, you know, the doing the things that uh, people who look like you want to look or act, have the life you want to have, like just start living that life. That's interesting. And the North node is in their 10th house and the South node is in their fourth. So they're literally being told like, get out of the home, which they're like the homemakers yeah. of the Zodiac, get out of the home, get out there. I mean, the way I look at it from a logical sense is like the world is, you know, there's so many people that cancers will baby and take care of who don't appreciate mm -hmm. them and who don't deserve it. And yet, and there's this whole world that's suffering that would just eat you up. So it's like, it seems like the world needs cancers more than ever right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Leo's. I love, love my Leo's Leo's. Um, the thing that comes up for Leo's to me, like from an astrological perspective is Saturn and Pisces in their eighth house. So I think they're about to go through a, a chameleon change. They're about to change, uh, upgrade their main upgrade. A lot of things. It's about comfort zone changes for one, the North node in Aries is saying it's time for them to live their purpose and Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus is in their house of career. So kind of like cancers, Leo's I think are about to come back on stage in a big way. And Pluto and Aquarius is going to call for them to like look at themselves differently. So they're about to go through, through like a huge metamorphosis starting this year. Um, my news resolutions for Ju uh, Leo is put my career on the map. So it is, it is time to play your hand, Leo. You won't have, you'll have, it'll be 12 years before you have this luck again. I don't care if hair and makeup isn't done, get out there. Like <laughs> you need to pull it off. And the second is um, become my best friend for growth. So I think Leo's spend too much time looking around at who their friends are when they need to be their own friend. Like they need to be their makeup artist. They need to be their own assistant. And so I think the Leo that's going to go really far is the one that really looks at themselves in the mirror critically and says, what can I do for you? And sort of speaks to that image. What do you see for Leo's? 
Yeah, I mean, you take taking the words out of my mouth today, but uh, so <laughs> you know, my, my thing with Leo for the ten years that I've had my channel, almost, um, you know, since day one, literally, I remember. You can go back to the oldest video. I said that Leo need, you know, they've been getting the eight of spades when I used to read playing cards. They get the eight of swords when I read regular cards. I say you have to leave a comfort zone uh, to get everything that you want, you know. Um, and so, you know, for Leo, I had take control of yourself. No one is coming to save you. Uh, it's funny because I did a Leo reading today where I was like saying to Leo, you know, I'm not criticizing you, Leo, but it, you know, you could find yourself looking at some of the people around you and, and saying, and being like, not blaming those people necessarily for your problems, but saying, oh, if they would only just do this, I, I would be fine. And, I, you know, I, I think that Leo needs to save themselves right now is really what I would do if I were Leo. Good point. And I think Leo's, it's a cycle. Um, yeah. Leo's are king of the jungle, so to speak. And I think what happens is they get a little too uh, pay too much attention to their followers and yep. they really need to just focus on where they're heading in the forest and only look back occasionally over their shoulder to see who's following them. I think, I think as they, as they go through a cycle, they get a little too obsessed with the followers instead of like the direction that they're taking their followers. And re, you know, Leo, real lions like to hunt. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's what I would say to Leo, you need to, you need to be a hunter at this time. Yeah, catch that mouse. Yeah, and yeah. there's plenty of rats out there. Let me just tell you. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a smorgasbord of opportunity for the Leos. All right, awesome. I think that's great. Leos are gonna love that. Virgos. Uh Virgos, you know, what comes to mind for Virgos to me is one Saturn and Pisces for them is that it's a whole new world in relationships for them. And most Virgos I know have sort of always been unhappy with relationships. I haven't ever met a, I actually don't think I've met a, a happy Virgo in a relationship and maybe they're, they're at home happy and they're not watching my shows. I don't know. Like, <laughs> so I understand how that works, but um, I think that this is a time where they're finally getting it right with themselves and treating themselves the way they deserve to be treated. And that in turn is going to attract the people that they deserve. And that could be, by the way, if you have romance, it might be business. If you have romance, it might be friendship or strategic alliance. And the North Node in Aries is, I think, saying for them, you've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable to get there. So, you know, Virgos like it their way. And I'm just going to say in 2024, it's not going to go your way, at least because you don't realize what you need at the core of it. So the New Year's resolutions uh, for Virgo is to fall in love with my own life. So I think Virgos really need to focus on what they like, like get super anal Virgo retentive about these are all <laughs> things I totally love and ignore the things they don't love. And um, the second is to believe in and love myself. So I think, you know, again, use that Virgo hyper awareness to really love your life and to love yourself. And I think Virgos are going to just skyrocket if they take that advice. Your thoughts? Yeah, I had time to party, Virgo. I think that was like the first bit that I got that you need to get out there and like have a good time. And literally the second thing I wrote down was uh, double down on the good stuff when you see it. So, you know, when good things enter into your life, you know, this reminds me of the Wheel of Fortune, which I, you know, everybody always gets, but Virgo, you seem to get with me quite a bit anyway. And, uh, you know, double down on the good stuff. Interesting. And the Wheel of Fortune, you know, I think Virgos think the Wheel of Fortune and they assume it's leaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what you're saying is the fortune's coming? Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, the Wheel of Fortune to me is like, it, it's not about good or bad either. Uh, you know, it's like when good things happen, double down on the good stuff. But also when bad things happen, you take care of them right away so they don't become bigger issues. It's about, you know, living at the center of the wheel. When we live at the center of the wheel, again, we don't run away from the bad stuff either. We just, we just take care of it right away. Oh, that's brilliant insight in the center of the yeah. wheel. The last thing I'll say for Virgos is Pluto and Capricorn for the last 15 years has been them revolutionizing their ideas of love. Hmm. And I think Virgos have always been very controlling around love. That's like, <laughs> it's it's kind of paradoxical because they, they want it exactly the way they want it. And then they're never satisfied. And I got to tell you, Virgo, it's only satisfying when it's something you didn't control. When it's a surprise yeah. that came upon you, you know, so I think they're finally taking their hands off of like having to control love or having to control creativity, which I think puts them in the place to be in the center of that wheel. Yeah. Love is not logical. You know, I say that all the time. And, you know, so if you're trying to make it logical, it's just never going to work. Well, I know Virgos, it's like, they, they come up, they're like, I want a man that's this way and 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 this way. And, this way. and I'm just like, where's the fun in that? Like, yeah, well, then fun. go create a robot at Tesla, you know, like if that's what you want, you know, kind of thing. So <laughs> I think they're freeing themselves from that this year, which is really great. And I'm excited to see Virgos just to wrap up on yeah. them. It's like, um, I've seen them m very much unhappy and dissatisfied. And I think this year, this might be the first year we might see a Virgo smile. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Libras. Libras are an interesting place because, you know, Pluto moving Capricorn, they've had a lot of issues with emotion, being emotionally grounded. Um, 
they, you know, they live in their mind. And so they emotionally, they're usually quite often, they can be a wreck, like, and they don't realize it because they're so busy thinking back and forth, thinking back and forth. But um, with the South node in their sign, the, the universe is saying, you got to step away from the, your old ego and step into the relationships that actually work with the North node in Aries. Because I think their ego has been wrapped up in trying to make something, it's almost like a puzzle for them to make a bad relationship work as sort of an ego kind of mm. like win-win thing. It's the Aries part of them, you know, where they kind of, you know, look proud of themselves. So it's God is saying, let go of the ego uh, and go for what actually works. So my resolutions for uh, Libra is forget everyone, follow my heart. Okay. So I'm we're saying leave behind the people you've been doing and abandon all relationships that don't work. So I'm, I'm giving Libra a, a free ride here to basically go off in the sunset and follow your heart. What are your thoughts on Libra? Again, very similar. I have a release loss. What you want comes from another perspective. So, you know, I'm always getting that, you know, Libra bouncing those things out. I'm always getting Libra. I know you're all sick and tired of hearing me say Aries. So it's like, I'm always talking <laughs> about the, the Aries thing with you and how, you know, there's something you have to release and yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And it, it, you know, what's funny is Libra's they are humble. They are diplomats. They are humanitarians, um, but they're actually very controlling. You know, like <laughs> they, they, like they they want they want world peace their way. You know, like yeah. kind of thing, the kind of thing. So I think what you're saying and what's coming up in the astrology too is it's like if it would have worked, it would have worked by now. So it's like I think it's time to call the race. It's a new era. Let it go and try a new way. Yeah. And I think, you know, this is like very collective too, is like, you know, I, I, I'm getting a lot of what I call Tinkerbell readings, right? Where I say, if you don't believe it's not going to happen, but it's more like, I think we need to believe in the magic, like magical things can happen. Good things can happen for us. You know, all that. That's a good point. I think Neptune, these high degrees of, of Pisces is in the yeah. magic. And I just want to say Jupiter and Taurus makes life manifest faster. It makes everything more fertile. So, you know, this is the time to believe in magic, certainly. And Pluto and Aquarius is sort of opening up magic that probably wasn't there in the dark ages, but is now. So I, I, I agree on that notion. It, it is definitely time to believe in magic and Libras, especially because they are, yeah. um, they're very, you know, because they're so relatable, you think they're like you, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they're just relating to you. They're very much in their mind and very logical. And I think you're right. Like focus on the magic for sure. Yeah. Brilliant insight. Scorpios. Scorpios are, are interesting in the sense that for one, um, the North node in Aries means it's like Scorpios have sort of, I think, always been the martyr. So Saturn and Pisces is saying it's time for Scorpios to get what their heart wants. Scorpios are actually very loving in the sense that they would usually sacrifice their heart for other people. And they assume that they would get their turn and they never did. Like it was like they ended up cheating out of it, cheated out of it the last minute or being stolen from or crossing a boundary. And um, so in this year, it seems like it's time to go for their heart. And it's also time to no longer be the slave. I think they've be, let themselves be the slave at work. They've really, you know, that's the North node in their sixth house uh, and move away from this karmic story that the world's out to get them. Um, <clears throat> I think the world was out to get them, but I think that was the old era, you know, in fairness, you were right, but that's over now. Like uh, this is the new age. And we also need enlightened Scorpios to like be the guardians of the new future. Like there are new hazards we need to look out for like AI and other things. So it's like Scorpios have to work, move away from the old battle and, and look at like the new scene of where we need police work. Um, so my resolution for Scorpio is let my dreams come true. And I say let, because you're the one that would prevent it from happening because you would doubt it and give myself what I give others. Those are the resolutions I think for Scorpios. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I like that. I have uh, maintain your independence and focus on resources. I saw like a scorpion and it's like, you know, you think about a scorpion maybe lives under like one rock, right? But I think it's also time for you to hunt. Just like Leo, I think it's time for you to maybe go explore other rocks, like see what else is out there, find new bugs to eat, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> you know, so I feel that there's like this opportunity for Scorpio to, um, you know, you're only, you know, staying where you are, you're only going to get those resources right there. It's like, whatever you do, Scorpio, in your life, I just see all these like other spots in my head where, you know, you can go over here, you, you can skitter over here, get some, something from over here go over here get something from over here so it's almost like you're you know built you have the opportunity to build these resources um which could be like skills you know talents money could be anything yeah and i also feel you know jupiter and uranus are in their house of relationships i think 
again, Scorpios have issues with self-love. So they've, they've had a lot of relationships that are based on them not loving themselves. And so they attract the people who didn't love them the way they want to be loved. Um, but with Jupiter and Uranus the seventh, it's like scorpions might find themselves dating birds now, like maybe out of the <laughs> whole insect realm. Like, it, yeah. yeah. And, and if there's one like insect that could like make love to a cat, it'd be a Scorpio. Like they know <laughs> how to like, they can get any creature in a bed. So it's like, I think when you speak about like out of your comfort zone, I think a lot of this relationships, I think Scorpios have, have tend to avoid certain types because they don't want the headache. And so they prejudge and they go, I don't want to deal with that person. I want to deal with that person. When really there might be a golden opportunity there if you're just willing to be a little more flexible with your own personal boundaries, I think. I've been telling everyone to give people like three dates. I'm like, you're not going to fall in love in the first date, the second date. It's going to happen on the third date. So, you know, if you meet a person who's decent enough, like it's, a, it's I don't know if anyone is out here running around on these streets, but it's like a war zone. So I tell everybody, I'm like three dates if they're nice enough and see how it goes. Yeah, that's a good point. I think it's especially for Scorpio too. And don't sleep with them until the fourth date. Yeah, fourth date. There you go. And don't and don't talk about astrology until the fourth date either. You know, you don't want to, don't, don't drop the astrology, ask them their sign or don't call their mother, ask them for the birth time. Wait until the fourth date. Yeah, exactly. I think they're really good with covert operation like that uh, and, and information. <laughs> like they're they're good. Uh, they're a lot of times their questions are loaded. Like they seem innocent, but they're drawing out intelligence <laughs> there. They're gathering intelligence. Yeah. yeah. Sagittarius is. Sages are interesting. I, I keep telling everyone like kiss your Sag because they're going, they're going to leave. Like they're about to, I think shift. They, they are social butterflies and they're about to fly to a new garden, I think. So, you know, enjoy them while you got them. The North node in Aries is in their house of love. So I think Sagittarius are about to fall in love or follow their heart or fall in love with something. And the South node in Libra is like get to leave behind probably a group or association or um, a group of friends or a place in society. I think they're also moving on to new economic potential because Pluto has been in 15 years in their house of fi finances and money. So I think that they finally have money down. So I just were always like, buddy, can you spare a dime after they paid for everyone's drinks at the bar? You know, like, so they've always been sort of that person. So <clears throat> I think we're looking at a new, a new Sagittarius, you know, model coming out here. The resolutions I gave for them was um, uh, live a life of ease is the first thing. And choose only my favorites. So live a life of ease in the sense of, I think they tend to stress out a little bit. Um, they obviously they overthink it. They over philosophize it. It's just like, go go ahead and take the easy right. Just because you take the path of least resistance doesn't mean you're lazy. It's basically what I'm saying. So live the life of ease. And to choose only their favorites, <clears throat> I think that's a real key of intelligence because Sages can pretty much get along with everyone. Like they will end up, if you see them at a party, they'll end up talking to everyone there. They have no class distinctions or whatever. And because they get along with everyone, I think sometimes they don't pick their favorites. So I'm saying to them with the North Node and Aries, it's like, it's time to pick your absolute favorite because I think it ends up inspiring everyone. What are your thoughts with Sagittarius? I mean, you just confirmed something major for me. I, I had, I've been doing these uh, Sagittarius readings where it's like, I see this reunion and then someone leaving the door. I literally have been saying this in Sagittarius readings. And I'm, it's like, it, it's like you uh, reunite with your family who's maybe like a little bit toxic and you have the reunion, it's nice. And then you walk away and that's it, you know? So, um, wow. Yeah, that blew my mind. But, wow. um, you know, I, for them, I just have work hard, play hard. That was like the, the only thing that popped into my head for Sagittarius. So, um, you know, I think that also, um, you know, I, I keep getting these things about side hustles for Sagittarius. So if you have a side hustle that you want to turn into something full time, then, you know, now might be the time for you to do that. Astrology affirms that Jupiter and Uranus are in their house of work and daily life. So I think they're, they're, I think they fall into routines in their daily life. They're so spontaneous and they'll try things off the cuff and do things other people wouldn't do. And that's, they can do that because they're so routine based in their other parts of their life, like jobs or whatever. And Jupiter and Uranus is saying, okay, it's time to mix that up and, and find a lifestyle that you really enjoy, which I think is that side hustle or doing something doing something you've always wanted on the side <clears throat> and moving forward. And, um, you know, relationships I say are around the corner for Sagittarius when Jupiter goes into Gemini. They're going to be really primed for relationships. And the first thing will be is a tour of exes. So if you start seeing a lot of exes showing up, um, that's because you're ready to move on to a new relationship. And I think that might be happening for the Sages. Yeah. And Sag, I tell you to experiment all the time. And, you know, so uh, I think it's because I, uh, I think the frustration for Sagittarius is throwing stuff at the wall. It doesn't work. And, but needing, you know, I think you need to keep throwing stuff at the wall until you find something that does. 
Yeah, ex- exactly. And I, and the thing is, is I think they, the thing about Sag is they, you don't have to know, like for the rest of the, Sages love to know, like they love to know. Yeah. Um, but here's a little secret that Chris and I can share with you. We didn't know when we got started. We just started and yeah. fig- we figured it out as we went along. So I think for Sagittarius is give yourself permission to learn as you go. You don't have to know everything out of the gate, I think is one of the, th- the keys, to wisdom for points for them. Okay, excellent. Capricorns. Capricorns have are wrapping up. This is a great year for Capricorns. I would definitely open up an extra bottle of champagne on New Year's because Pluto's been in your sign for 15 years. It's going to dip back in September to November. So there's going to be one final trial. Like the devil will try to tempt you back one last time. And, you know, you kind of deserve that because you hold on so hard. You, you you hold on the side of the pool. You have to stomp on your hand to get you to let go of the side of the pool. Like, So that's that's your own doing, Capricorns. But I do think that the, the worst is behind you. Like at this point, you can go ahead and plan your business and plan to go forward. Uh, the other thing with Capricorns is like, I think God is like birthing conscious capitalism with Capricorns now. Like Capricorns in the old era were like in wanted power for power's sake, wanted money for money's sake. And Jupiter and Uranus is saying, no, for love's sake, it's heart-based. It's it's fourth dimension, you know, the fourth chakra up from your, from your root. So I think what we're going to see this year for Capricorns is, you know, like that classic cliche of like the attorney that quits their job to become a musician, that sort of thing where they sort of give up the the, the steady and, and they go to what seems to be insane. And Pluto moving to Aquarius means they're going to elevate their economy and their way of making money to new ways. So my resolution for Capricorn is celebrate my alchemy. So it's like really cherish wherever you change and that you have changed, like really own the change. And so you've always been rock steady. Like, look at how I can stay the same. I think it's time to celebrate the opposite. Like, look at how much I can change and how I'm different than I used to be. And the second resolution is, make love the new currency. So mm. instead of earning dollars, earn love. I think that will make you on top of the mountain and king of the mountain or queen of the mountain in the new era. What are your thoughts? I'm always making lawyer jokes to Capricorn. Capricorn, <laughs> you know this. So, uh, you know, I said, uh, walking away from one thing uh, towards what truly serves you. I mean, literally, um, you know, I think that you the the whole pool analogy analogy is like perfect. It's like you have that job as a lawyer, going to the musician. I mean, I, I don't think I could say it any better than that. So, <laughs> you know, I think that's literally what Capricorn needs to do. I saw the eight of cups in my head when I did this, um, which is like, you know, it, the only card with an eclipse on it. It's ecl- eclipsing something out. Oh, interesting. And eight is the number of Capricorn in my step system. So yeah. that's a that's a strong affirmation as well. Um, an interesting f- a fact about them, I think that's worth noting is um, the key to them changing is really putting their emotional integrity before everything. So if they feel grounded, they'll be able to change. If they don't focus on their feelings, they're going to have a hard time changing. The North Node's in their fourth house right now. So I think the key to that walking away or eclipsing is that you feel grounded and feeling grounded is self-nurturing, good sleep, good food, like the basics basically. Yeah. All right. So this is an interesting one. The Aquarius is, and then we have your sign brother. Um, Aquas, this is a, a, we could probably do a whole show on the Aquas. Maybe (laughs) we will someday. Um, You know, Pluto's about to move into their sign for the first time in 249 years. So the way I look at Pluto is if Pluto hits your sign, and I mean this with all due respect, you are the most behind in school. Like, so if Pluto's in your sign, so Capricorns were the most antiquated signs on the earth. Now Aquariuses are like, they are the most behind and behind meaning behind the times, you know, behind where the earth is going. So in some cases, you know, Aquariuses have a lot of growing to do, but in other cases, because Pluto's there, you're going to have where you have normally been sort of tight squeezed and not wanting to change. Pluto gives you the ability to go ahead and say, ah, screw it. I'm going to do it. Screw it, you know, and sort of jump for it. So Jupiter in Taurus, again, similar to Capricorns, it's like they're going to have to focus on feeling secure before they can jump in the pool. So make sure you have your rubber ducky or you have your inflatable, you know, uh, life preserver or whatever. So like make sure your feelings are are nurtured. I think it's a big thing. And what's the further thing about that is North Node in Aries is in the third house. So it's like, Aquariuses are know-it-alls, okay, um, as a lot of signs, but the universe is saying, forget gathering knowledge, start sharing it. The North Node in Aries is like, it's time to start speaking up, speaking your truth. As bizarre and freaky deaky as you are, you're what the world needs, actually. So it's time to open your mouth and put your foot in it. So the resolutions for Aquarius is 
um, to make what I am worth. So it's time for them to claim the salary they need. That's based on Saturn moving into their uh, second house. And to share information, don't waste time proving. So I think a lot of times they try to prove they're right or try to explain they're right. I think they just need to say they are right and not look back. What are your thoughts, ma'am? Yeah, so I said, is the juice worth a squeeze? You said squeeze. In, in yeah, your, that's awesome. And, uh, yeah. I said, uh, you know, learning how much time to invest in whatever uh, whatever you're investing your time into is what I got for Aquarius. Um, I remember when I was sitting here writing it down, I was like, oh, yeah, they need to figure out, like, you know, even arguments, things like that, like what's worth it, what's not, and only focus on what's worth it. That's actually, with Saturn and Pisces, that's precisely what the astrology is saying is, I think... I think because they're eccentric and weird, it's like, this is your age, Aquarius. Like, this is the age of you. You're not ready for it yet, though, you know, for the record, but you are the answer we're seeking in lots of ways. So uh, it, it, whatever is worth it to you is worth it to the world. I, th I think it's synergistically tied together there. Um, I think we're going to see some real interesting, I think we see a lot of Aries coming out, but, you know, we had a, a, a you know, I, one point that David Palmer made, you, we were talking, you brought up the Leo King recently, was he was saying all the Capricorns that fell in Pluto mm. and Capricorn, you know, he gave a whole list of Capricorns that fell. And and now it's like, you might see some Aquariuses who are not on the right side of things, they will start to fall. So if you're going against the um, the world's grain, I think you're in trouble. If you are the answer we seek, I think you're about to be promoted for Aquariuses. It's going to be a powerful good year. And then lastly, but never leastly, my friend, the <laughs> Pisces. <laughs> um, you know, Pisces are also, it's time for Pisces to make bank. So I think I think Pisces until now, no matter how old you are, if you're an 80-year-old Pisces, if you're an eight-year-old Pisces, your life up until now is all past lives. I think it was all past life, catching up with your stuff, your mistakes, your your strengths, finding your strengths, remembering your strengths hooking up with people that you know you shouldn't hook up with because they, uh, although they're fun, they're the bane of your existence. I mean, Pisces mm -hmm. have been only doing spiritual work up until now. So in some cases, I think Pisces are a little tired because you've been working your little tails off, your little fish tails, uh, trying to uh, keep up and not drown. <laughs> I'm using deliberate puns here. Mm -hmm. But I think Saturn and Pisces now is saying, okay, the world is a hot mess. We're in a moral crisis, you know, with, with Neptune in the high degrees. We need Pisces to go out and spread the spiritual love and with the North Node Aries to go make a fortune at it. Like you, you know, it's time to be not evangelical, but like definitely it's time to be paid for your wisdom. This, and the, the, I'll say this too, the old organized religions that said you give it away and it's in to be humble by giving it away. That was a system that was actually trying to control and brainwash you. I think uh, it should be an equal trade in Aquarius. So my resolutions for Pisces are uh, show them what they never saw in me. So show them what they never saw. Show the world what you've been keeping quiet or to yourself or sort of to yourself. And and then the hard one is to practice what they preach. <laughs> I think they have to do what they are preaching. Pisces love to say how to do it and then they don't do it. Um, so <laughs> I think the ones who are going to do really well are the ones who practice what they preach. I know this, it's hard for you because you are a Pisces perhaps, but what do you, what's your uh, advice for the Pisces? What's the new resolution? Yeah. So um, I said, I, I could hit on so much there, but I said, accept the unusual path, uh, embrace spontaneous energy and listen to your higher self, which is the, sa the same as kind of uh, what you said about, you know, living the, the higher truth, you know, listening to your higher self. So, um, you know, I think that's what Pisces needs to do. I'm, Pisces, I'm always telling you that you need to get as much attention as possible, you know, over these next few years, you need to be the example. Um, you know, I always go back to that Uranus in your second Pisces, you know, going back to Uranus and Aries, right? Um, and, um, you know, I, I don't know, there's something about that it always pops into my head for Pisces, Uranus and Aries, maybe because it's like a challenging place for having it in your second, Uranus in your second, I mean, come on, you know, that's like hard financially. So you've learned all these lessons that um, I believe people are about to learn. So Pisces, your job is to like, be the example, show people what you already know how to do. Yeah, I agree, actually. And they did learn hard. And Pisces, I had a lot of Pisces friends who were very qualified for stuff, but just couldn't, you know, put two dimes together, had a real hard time. And um, I think it's because they were looking at it from the age of Pisces spiritual value system, which mm. is the whole like sacrifice and, you know, you know, fasting. I mean, giving stuff up <laughs> was sort of like the old way of looking. 
The other interesting thing about Pisces is that Pluto and Aquarius is in their 12th house. So yeah. their spiritual level right now for all practical purposes is actually rock bottom. Like, so wherever they are, they're going to go higher and higher and higher and higher and closer to God for the next 24 years. So um, in a way, they're sort of the pioneers of spirituality. I think they're going to channel information that we haven't seen before. I think of Albert Einstein, who was a Pisces. Like when, when a Pisces is plugged in, they channel the secrets of the universe and bring it to the planet. So I think they're going to be a huge resource of information. And the South and the Libra in their eighth house means, you know, again, Pisces tend to like find a fish bowl and they just keep swimming in the same bowl. And I'm definitely seeing it's time to like find a fish tank or an ocean or go down yeah. the sink. You know, like uh, I was gonna say, ocean Pisces. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to become a great white. We, you know. Yeah, it is time to up up the game there, and it's time to spread the gospel. I think, um, you know, the the world is literally waking up to spirituality, and forget organized religion. Pisces are plugged in. You know, they yeah. they they really are, and the world is clueless. And the people who say they know don't, because if they did, we'd be a lot better off. Our life our life expectancy would be going up, not down. So I think we really need the Pisces to preach, you know, which, you yeah, know, absolutely. brings us to Minopon. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So that was excellent, brother. Um, what are your, so sort of to close off this conversation, which has been a great one, I'm sure um, our Minnow Joy fans are, are having a blast here. What, from a broad perspective, do you have any advice, you know, let's just say going into the new year? I mean, let's narrow down to the first quarter. What are your, what are your cards telling you that we should all be doing as we start the year, the first three months? Yeah. Building uh third place solutions. That's what I, I focus on making yourself unique. Don't, you know, come, I think the danger maybe is uh, looking at other people and thinking like, Oh, my thing has to work out exactly how it did for this other guy, you know? Um, so it's like, you're going to have your own unique story. Maybe that's the better way to put it is that really focus on telling the story that you want to live. That's a great story. And that's what innovation is, you know, for the record, yeah. a lot of people think of innovation. They think I need to improve what's out there and yeah. it's really, no, just improve yourself and you will improve what's out there. So <clears throat> I think going out and crafting your own path. I mean, that's what this new age is about. The, the new is that you are crafting your own path, that you are doing what you've always wanted to do. I would say the same. I think it is absolutely time with Jupiter and Taurus, like even if you don't plan to build buy the lot, like it's like, it, <laughs> you, you want to definitely like go ahead and claim your territory in markets, in, in intellectual property, you know, anywhere, like claim that territory, because we're talking about, it's going to grow for the next 12 years, like a magic bean. And it seems like in these first three months of the year, we're really going to be finding where we belong exactly in this new world and, and claiming that territory and definitely being our individual self as well is what I feel. Yeah, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, I mean, I heard uh, shovels, not gold. So, you know, I think people should focus on, you know, finding the shovel, uh, sell, find your shovel to sell, whatever that is. So very similar. Oh, that's a good point, too. It's like, maybe you're not the gold miner, but you're the one that right. sold them the shovel. Okay. Yep. That's where most of the money was made, actually. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> was from the people that supply the, shovels, the gold miners, yeah. the people who supply the people dreams. Yeah, I think money can be made on both sides. Um, and would, and I don't want to get political, but any advice as far as the, um, the posture to approach the world power change? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, it, 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 you know, buckle up, it, uh, is what I would say. I think that, you know, um, you know, I, I don't even try to predict these things cause you know, I think that it's so unpredictable what's going to happen by the time we get to November and, um, you know, even before November, I, I you know, I think of like all the astrological stuff that's going to be happening where I'm like, no, it's, it's just going to be, you know, I, I think that we really can't even predict what's going to happen. Yes, I agree. Actually, I I have no prediction for the for the yeah. for the election. No prediction. I, I even my psychic, my guides, my guides are telling me we don't know. Like I think <laughs> Earth is, I think Earth is deciding. This is I don't think it's a destined outcome. I think it. I think part of the new age is that the that we the people um, are going to take the power our forefathers gave us two hundred you know forty nine years ago. I think that that's part of what it is. So and the consequence of that is you know it's like predictability actually was because it was being controlled. Yeah. So right. Yeah. The reason why an astrologer could predict or, or a psychic could predict the outcome is because some JP Morgan somewhere had probably pulled those strings. Yep. And I think now, especially with the introduction to a third candidate or that third choice, 
it throws it, it throws the equation into true like lotto pick. Like it really will be based on people. Um, my advice to the world is to stand back and stop reacting. Like yeah. take the, there's a lot of bottom feeders that are taking energy from the reaction and taking energy from the fight. Plus you're distracted. Your eyes are on the ball. You're not, your eyes on your opponents and whatnot. Like we are not the, the opponent here. We are the team. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the opponent is the old world power, whatever that happens to be. I don't, I'm not even going to say, I know what the old world power is. I'm just going to say, I know it's over with Pluto leaving Capricorn, like whatever it was, just like the last time Pluto left Capricorn monarchy was no longer the world power. King George at that point was on a decline from that point forward. And monarchy was on a decline from that point forward. The same is true now. So if you really want truth to prevail, stop reacting to the old stuff, sit back and observe. I think a quiet audience is much more terrifying to politicians than one that's booing. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, be careful of the grifters, um, you know, because I think that, you know, that whole thing about getting people all excited and riled up, it's it, it, those, you know, reminds me of the Knight of Swords reactions where it's just like someone rushes in and is like tells you something right to your face and then you freak out, but it's not true in the first place. And, um, you know, the way that I see it, like, I think we're going to see a lot of that on social media. I don't think it's here to stay. Um, yeah. But I think we'll see a lot of people who come out and are like, oh, my God, you have to worry about all these things. And then but really, you find out you don't like later. Yeah. And and I think another part of the new age or the new era, as we're calling it on Serious Joy, is um, that the mind is no longer the number one state of awareness. Like, I think in the mm -hmm. age of reason, um, in particular, we invented science, we invented empirical evidence, we invented, you know, scientific methods and proving things. And that's all great. But to me, I've always said science is actually measuring God. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, to me, yeah, you're measuring. Yes, it's accurate. But you're measuring a miracle that manifested, in my opinion. So I think what we think, you know, we're in new territory. Your mind has been programmed by TV, by media, by social, other people, by your family. Your mind does not have the answer because the mind only knows what it has seen. So I think part of the new age is listening to your feelings and mostly listening to your heart. If it's not something your heart wants or desires, you've given it, you let your mind choose up, and, up until now. Are you happy? So why not go ahead and let the heart drive, I think, in this year and, and see what happens? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's heart-based in fourth dimension. Brilliant, man. Well, Chris, it's awesome working with you, brother. Like yeah, same to you. we we have a high mind. There's a <laughs> there's some sort of a Chris fraction in heaven. I yeah, mean, there definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we see things the same way, but from different perspectives and different power uh pers perspectives. Um, I'm grateful. I hope we can work together again this year. In fact, we do have some secrets coming out of where we are working together and collabing. So if you enjoy us working together, just you wait. We have some fun stuff coming out this year, uh, maybe even an opportunity to meet us and shake our hands. So we'll just say that much and tease a little bit here uh, as we go into <laughs> the year. I hope you have yes. a great new year, brother. Uh, it's been yes. a pleasure meeting you this year. One of the best things that happened to me this year. I'm grateful. Same here. Yeah, it's been so much fun. I've had so much fun collaborating. So thank you. And we've just begun, man. It's it's the age of collaboration uh, for the next 24 years. So No doubt about it. Thank you. And hello to all the minnows in your pond. I'm grateful for all of you swimming over in our pond too. We we appreciate you. Yeah, and same to, same to your Serious Joy people. Brilliant. All right, brother. Until next time, see you later. Bye.